the temple laid incomplete. The temple was not completely built because the people were so discouraged that they let their discouragement, their physical condition, stop the work of the Lord. The elders and the senior men and all of the priests and Levites in their time, Deacon Bill, were, they were just randomly shouting and say discouraging things to the people because they said, there's no way that this young man will ever build anything that will compare to what Solomon built. Right. I don't care how much you try, I don't care how much you have, I don't care how many people that you have supporting you, you will not do it. So isn't it funny sometimes that you get some discouragement from the church that can be so disheartening and so crushing that you don't even want to do church anymore. But the thing about God, he always sends somebody along the way that will encourage you to hold fast, to stay the course, and do what God has assigned for you to do. So what happened was in scripture, they begin to do just what some of us do today, Autumn. They begin to do absolutely nothing. They got complacent with sitting there, doing nothing, looking at everybody do everything else, and they said, that's not my responsibility. I don't have the resources. I don't have the time. The strip. So I'm going to sit on my do nothing and do nothing. And you just bring that to the day's time. How many of us will, 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 will lose sense of urgency and the, the reluctancy will set in and if we wouldn't want to do what God says to do because we didn't have or because it was difficult and it seemed like we were by ourselves and it seemed like it was something impossible. But somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say, don't lose your glory. Don't lose your glory. How frustrating could that be to have the desire to build God's temple, but you have nothing to build it with? How frustrated and angry could you get at yourself because you have the mind, you have the vision, you have the desire, you have the heart, but then you started to, to look around and you get frustrated because, God, I want to do it, but I can't do it. God, I wish I had so I could do it, but I can't. Imagine the aggravation, the frustration that was on the people of God because of so much what people say. It was just simply the foundation was laid. They laid the foundation, but there was no doors to open up the way. Imagine coming to church and it was nothing but the concrete floor here. And we were still required to do what God says do, just as if we were in the full temple. Imagine would you still have the glory to serve God like that? Would you really have the desire to do what God says to do in the moment where you see as if nothing is becoming lively around you? It seems like everything is becoming dead and stagnant. It seems like nothing is happening towards what God is having to do. Would you be excited to serve a God like that? But the good thing about the text of Mr. McDonald is that the people continue to serve God. And if I just had to just leave four points Four points are the four points that will help us battle discouragement, to help us battle frustration, to help us battle the things that we seem to cannot understand. It will be simply this. Number one, remember God's presence. Number two, remember God's proclamation. Remember God's performance. And lastly, remember God's promise. Remember God's proclamation, remember God's performance, and remember God's promise. We must never lose sight of God's presence. Because the Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. The presence of the Lord can change situations that you cannot even begin to understand or fix on your own if you remain in God's presence. Scripture said, just like he was with Moses in Egypt and with the children of Israel in Egypt, so will he be with you. It doesn't matter the circumstance, the situation, or the obstacle that's in your way. As long as you remember the proclamation that God gave, he will give you strength to endure. You stay in his presence and he will give the proclamation fruition. What do you mean by that? What God said over your life then is going to eventually come to pass. If we endure. If God said it, that settles it. If God made a promise to your children and to your children's children, guess what, beloved? It must come to pass if we endure. Remember, remember that he says that there's going to be a shaking. 
there is going to be an act of God. It's going to be something that we cannot credit to anybody but God. And there's going to come a time in our lives as believers where we're going to literally have to say, okay, God, I've done all that I can do. I reached my wits in. There's nothing else that I can do. There's nothing else that I can say. There's no more money I can borrow. There's no other people that I can ask to help me. I must totally depend on you. And what God says in the scripture that he will shake the house. And we can take that literally and shake the foundation and send storms and rains and, and just you for an example, I mean, for an example, he can even send COVID. The Lord can send things that will shake us from the normality of life that we have got complacent in. Sometimes we understand, why me? Why Lord? Why this? Why am I sick? Why don't I have? Why am I not able to do? Sometimes the Lord comes to bring a performance in our lives so that he can get the glory. Sometimes we may not understand. Sometimes we may not really want to accept. But the reality is, if God promised to come and he comes to shake it, he's come to, to move. The scripture says, heaven and earth. What more would he do for his children who he's already made promises for, who he's already told that it will happen if you endure? Somebody say endure. endure. Let's think about the greatest moment that God did for you in your life from today in your past. If you get your mind on that thing, the Bible says that the latter will be even greater than the greatest memory that you have of God. So just think about it. The current frustrations and the current yes. obstacles and the current yes. lack of and the current yes. healing that's needed in the body and the current uneasiness in your spirit about what God is going to do for you and your family and your life. Think about all those things and then reflect on verse 9. That the latter, somebody say the latter, yes. shall be greater than the former. Yes. And in order to walk in this confidence, Jamie, you must remember the promise that God made the children of Egypt. You must remember the God, that's just not even talking about Egypt. Let's talk about the promises that God made us. He promised that if you live in his word, that he would bless your work with your hands. He promised you that if you live for him and forsake the world, that he will give you the desires of your heart. He promised you that if you walk up right for him, Tariel, that he will not withhold not one good thing from you. God made us so many promises. There's over 1,000 promises in the Bible. And I'm quite sure that if we read the book, that we will find a promise that will fit our current situation. But the key to it all is as Evangelist Mickey said, we must endure. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but he or she that endureth to the end. 